Hey everyone, it's Sandra from Fox Landing. This week we get to talk about invertebrates, some of my favorite animals. Well, you might be thinking, well, what kind of animal is an invertebrate? It's just an animal that lacks a backbone. Inverts account for 95% of the animals in the animal kingdom. Scientists have split them into broad categories to group like animals together. This is called a phyla. Today we're going to talk about the four main phyla that we like to address when we're back at camp. We have an activity to go along with this lesson. We're going to make our own clay to shape our very own invertebrates. These are the materials you'll need to make your clay. Mix, mix, mix them all together. Microwave for one minute, take it out, mix it up a little bit, and then put it back in for 20 more seconds until it looks like mashed potatoes. While we let that cool, we're going to learn about phylum mollusca. Mollusca means soft body. This group of animals is characterized by some form of soft, squishy body. This is why the octopus can fit into almost any space. Most of the animals in this phylum make a hard shell out of calcium carbonate to protect their soft body. This is one of the most diverse groups of animals in the animal kingdom, with over 100,000 animals described. It ranges from tiny nudibranchs that can absorb stinging cells from prey and use it for defense to octopuses which are thought to be one of the most intelligent animals using individual arms to touch, taste, and smell independently of the brain and chromatophores to change color and pattern. Next we'll gain some inspiration from phylum arthropoda. Arthropoda translates to jointed foot. The animals in this phylum are characterized by having jointed limbs. This is the largest phylum in the entire animal kingdom. It includes lobsters, crabs, spiders, insects, and many more. 84% of all known species on Earth are in this phylum. One of the coolest marine arthropods is the mantis shrimp. They have spear or club-like appendages that shoot out with over 200 pounds of force, as fast as a bullet from a 22 caliber rifle. Echinodermata translates to spiny skin. This phylum is exclusively marine. It includes sea cucumbers, sea stars, sand dollars, brittle stars, and more. Many animals in this phylum have tube feet where they use water pressure to move each individual foot. Some of these feet even have light detecting eyes. The animals in this phylum have incredible regenerative abilities. Sea stars can grow back arms and sea cucumbers can eject their internal organs to distract predators in a process called evisceration. Lastly, we're going to talk about phylum Cnidaria. Cnidarians are classified by their stinging cells. This phyla includes corals, jellies, Portuguese man o' war, anemones, sea pens, whips, and fans. These stinging cells, or nematocysts, are present on the tentacles of most cnidarians, and when stimulated, that barb ejects into the foreign object, often ejecting a venom that causes paralysis and even death. Many cnidarians are colonial species, meaning they live together typically in one structure. Now that we learned about the animals, we have enough inspiration to make our clay figures. To dry the sculptures, you can bake them or leave them out to dry for two to three days. Remember not to touch them while they're drying. In the arms of the angels. Good thing I had extra clay and toothpicks to repair my crab. Once they've completely dried, you can paint your amazing sculptures. Here's what they look like when they're all done. Here's all the animals that inspired us from each phylum. Show us what invertebrates you pulled inspiration from. Remember to get creative. Tag Me Science to showcase all of your creations.